A reading from the Gospel of John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The word of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're celebrating the Feast of All Saints today. It's about as far away from the day as it, it is as far away as it can be. Um, because Halloween, All Hallows, was last Sunday. And the actual day of All Saints, the first, was last Monday. And we talked about last week how all saints and all souls and all hallows is a thin time in our liturgical year. So many of us have experienced a place that was a thin place for us where the boundary between this world and the next is particularly thin. Many of us have had an experience in a particular place of the divine, of the spirit. Maybe we were overcome by an experience of the unseen breaking in to the world of the seen. It happens in many places. It can happen in church, in a building of the church. Several years ago in my previous parish, an older member of the congregation named Don was worshiping for us for what would be his last time. And we knew that he was toward the end of his life. He had been struggling with pancreatic cancer for a very long time. 
And during communion, that nave became a thin place. We were singing the hymn, I am the bread of life, which most of you know. And as I brought communion down to Don and his wife, Meg, who were sitting in the pews, the singing, our singing suddenly seemed to be at one with the heavenly chorus, with the saints and the angels. We were all singing together as one, proclaiming our faith in Christ, who promised, and I will raise them up on the last day. And we knew that dawn would soon be on that other side and that we would soon grieve his loss. But most of all, we knew and we felt in that moment that the faith that we shared with him and Meg and all the company of saints would hold us all and that someday joy would overcome the sorrow. Many of us have been to an ancient house of worship, even older than our own beautiful parish, which is over a hundred years old, part of it. Many of us have been to cathedrals, um, maybe even cathedrals in Europe that have been standing for over a thousand years. And walls and stones that have been infused with the prayers of the faithful over hundreds of years often give us a taste of the spirit of the divine. They often are a thin place. Sometimes it is in the glory of God's creation that we experience a thin place. I know for me, it's often at the ocean, the majesty of the Pacific Ocean. And many people have told me over the years that one of the places that they feel God's presence most strongly is when they are surrounded by the beauty of God's creation. And sometimes a thin place happens in a conversation with another person. And that can happen even on Zoom. And I have experienced that many times over the last year and a half in this pandemic that a conversation with another person can become a thin place, whether you are with them in person or whether you are with them virtually. Sometimes also people who are at the end of their lives begin to shine with a certain radiance. I have seen that, I've experienced that more than once with someone in their last hours or minutes of life. Sometimes a conversation becomes a thin place, a place to encounter the divine. So today, as we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, this celebration for many of us is always a thin place. And we remember today all those who've gone before us in faith into the greater life of God. And I invite you this day during the prayers of the people to add your prayers, either silently or aloud, for some of the people who have been important to you in your life, who have given you strength. We give thanks for them today. And for all those known and unknown who live on in that great cloud of witnesses. I imagine for those who traveled with Jesus during his lifetime on earth, that to be with Jesus was always to be in a thin place, a place where the boundaries between this world and the next were extremely thin. Today we have this powerful story that we also often hear toward the end of Lent of the raising of Lazarus. Jesus was particularly close to Mary and Martha and Lazarus. 
and Lazarus had died. And some days later, I guess four days later, Jesus was there with them. And Mary said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mary was sure that the presence of Jesus would have prevented her brother's death. We don't know this for certain. Perhaps it would have. But what seems more astounding is what Jesus does in this situation. Remember that the authorities have already been looking for ways to trap Jesus. The religious authorities are already looking to find ways to imprison him. They're keeping a sharp eye on him and his miracles. And Jesus knows that he is in danger, but it doesn't stop him. And so Jesus shows the power, his power over death itself. He raises Lazarus from the dead. And from that time on in the Gospel of John, we see that they, the religious authorities are seeking Jesus to put him to death. Jesus has released Lazarus from the tomb, and soon Jesus will have to enter the tomb himself. But Jesus shows us his power over death itself, sort of a precursor to the resurrection as he raises Lazarus from the dead. Now, all of us are mortal, all of us will die. And none of us knows exactly when we will die. But we do know that we are not our own. We do know that we belong to God and that we will return to God in our earthly death. The Quaker William Penn wrote these words in the early 1700s about this thin time, the thin veil that separates the worlds. They that love beyond the world cannot be separated by it. Death cannot kill what never dies. Death is but crossing the world as friends do the seas. They live in one another still. Nor can spirits ever be divided that love and live in the same divine principle. We are one with that great cloud of witnesses, the great company of saints. And sometimes, particularly around the Feast of All Saints, we can feel the thinness of the veil between our existence in this world of flesh and blood and their existence in the world beyond this world in the greater life in God. Several years ago, before, shortly before his death, the singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen wrote to an old friend. She was in Norway and she was dying. Marianne had been his muse when they were much, much younger. They had been in love and been very close. And he found that she was dying and he wrote her these words. He was in America and she was in Norway. Well, Marianne, it's come to this time when we are really so old and our bodies are falling apart. And I think I will follow you very soon. 
Know that I am so close behind you that if you stretch out your hand, I think you can reach mine. And you know that I've always loved you for your beauty and your wisdom, but I don't need to say anything more about that because you know all about that. But now I just want to wish you a very good journey. Goodbye, old friend. Endless love. See you down the road. Know that I am so close behind you that if you stretch out your hand, I think you can reach mine. It is a thin time and a thin place, this feast of all saints. When we are reminded of our connection in the great cloud of witnesses, the great company of saints that surrounds us and all of us are contained within the mercy of God. Amen.